Hello and welcome to Jolene Knits A Lot. This is my show about knitting and crafting and all the things I get up to in Edmonton, Alberta. How are you? How are things where you are? We've had a very rainy couple of weeks, but today it promises to be sunny, at least for the first part of the day, which is great because I'm recording this on Canada Day. Canada Day is July 1st, and it is the day that we celebrate our um, the signing of our constitution or confederation. So happy Canada Day to you. <laughs> and um, my family will be celebrating by having pancakes when my teenagers wake up probably around noon. And then we're gonna go and celebrate with some friends uh, for a barbecue this afternoon. I have to bake a strawberry cheese, not strawberry cheesecake, strawberry shortcake, because I said I would bring dessert. Um, and I do love to bake. So that will be in my future this afternoon. But in the meantime, I thought I'd show you some of the things I've been getting up to. I have a few finished things, which is really a relief because I, my one finished object is massive and I will show you that at the end. Um, I have been working on some market bags. Again, um, if you recall, I, I knit these quite some time ago. I have been knitting market bags on and off for years and I love them. I use them all the time when I go shopping, if I go to the market, if I'm going to the library to toss some books in, if I happen to be at a beach, um, they're just really handy. And my older daughter said to me today that, because we had seen some people carrying around crochet bags because apparently crochet bags are trendy. She's like, oh mom, you've been trendy for a long time and you just didn't realize it. It's nice to be recognized. Anyway, I finished my girlfriend market bag and this bag took a bit more yarn than I was expecting. Um, I started out with some yarn that my friend had brought back for me. It was leftovers from another bag project. So I did the base and some of the lace and then I ran out of that color. So I picked up some Knit Plix Dishy in this sort of deep royal blue and I ran out of that color. And then I switched to this, um, I think it's Burnett, their Burnett Handy Cotton because um, I had a ball of navy and I ended up with an ombre sort of <laughs> bag that actually looks pretty good. I changed the pattern up just a little bit. Um, the Girlfriend Market Bag, which is the pattern I used for this one, um, has you knit a garter um, band at the top. So here at the top, I, so I swapped out garter for a Knit One Pearl one one by one ribbing and I did about five or six ish rounds of that and then I bound off a bunch and uh, left some for a handle and then bound off a bunch and left some to be grafted together at the end and this handle that I made is just what did I do I knit one and then I slipped one with the yarn in the front and then I knit one and I slipped one with the yarn in the front. And what that gives you is basically um, a tube. <laughs> so if you look at this handle, um, it, 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 it's quite strong. It doesn't have a lot of stretch, which is great because you don't want a lot of stretch in your handle. But if you look at the way that the two piece, so this, this handle appears flat, but if I take the two sides of it and pull them apart, it's a tube. It's basically double knitting is what I did. Um, which is the technique where you knit one and slip one with the yarn in front and it creates a double layer of fabric with a t with that, that is not connected in the center. And that's what I made, um, which is which is great if that's what you're looking for, but also um, kind of a handy way to make a handle. So this handle is quite firm. It doesn't have a ton of stretch, which is great. And um, I can fit a lot of stuff in it. If only I had a lot of stuff to stick in it. Um, give me a couple minutes and then we'll fill it with something really large. The other thing I finished in the last couple of weeks was a pair of socks. These were the Vesper socks that I was knitting. Um, they're sort of a rainbowy color. This is a color um, hand dyed by Mustache Yarns. And the color was inspired by the original colors that Vespa scooters were available in in Italy. So these are all of the uh, colors that you could get a Vespa in. And you can see I did about one and a half pattern repeats. So it starts with this light blue and just fades down, ends about here and then starts again. 
For these socks, I did a swirl toe. Um, and on one sock, I knit the decreases as a knit one, or sorry, knit two together. And on the other sock, I did the decreases as a SSK. So they swirl in opposite directions, which I thought would be kind of fun as you're wearing them. And then I did the exact same thing for the heels. So I tried to swirl toe <laughs> as a heel, and I came up with these. So I knit a few rounds first to give myself some depth in the heel, and then I just knit a swirl toe on the heel section. And I did the exact same thing. So for the sock that had knit two, the knit two decrease, which I believe is this one, I did a knit two decrease on the heel. So the toe and the heel, here, let's do it this way. Maybe we can compare them. So you can see these decreases are going in this direction. And these decreases are also going in that direction. And then for the other sock, which I did an SSK decrease on the toe. And as you know, an SSK decrease leans the other way. Wait, yes, this is definitely the SSK decrease. And then this is the SS, this is the, sorry, SSK decreases on the heel. Am I focusing? There we go. So I just thought that would be fun to try them in opposite directions on the uh, two socks. I haven't worn these yet, but I will test drive them and let you know what I think about my heel adventures. <laughs> so this is um, the Vesper colorway in the mustache yarns. And uh, the heels, toes and cuffs were knit with some West Yorkshire spinners in their milk bottle colorway, which turns out is a very lovely, neutrally kind of creamy white that goes with a lot of things. So it's becoming a go-to for heel cuffs and toes as well. And the final finished object I have is my What the Fade shawl. Um, I think when last we spoke, I was working on the garter section and I have to tell you, um, I just got to be in my bonnet about this shawl. I wanted it to be done because <clears throat> there were some other projects that I wanted to be working on and I just wanted to be finished. So uh, I worked on this quite monogamously. I did not cut the tails off, but I did weave them in. Um, and I managed to finish this massive shawl. Um, if only there was a way to show you it all on screen. I'm gonna have to get up and attempt to fit it in. You. <laughs> Stay right there. Can you see it? <laughs> it's huge. This is um, the right side of, this is, this is the right side of the fade. And this is the wrong side of the brioche. You can see the colors are a bit different. And it is just, it's massive. It's just huge. I'm going to insert some pictures of the whole thing here for you to view. But it turns out when you block brioche stitch and garter stitch, your project will really, really grow. And that's just fine. I was actually looking for a really big, snuggly kind of shawl. And I was also looking to get rid of some stash. These were a bunch of um, variegated or speckled skeins that had been sitting in my stash for a really long time that I was just ready to use and move on. So um, as you can see, this is the right, si the right side of the fade. We're focusing, yay. It's just massive, keeps going. And then the fade also happens right through the garter section. It's huge and uh, I'm really happy with it. I'm happy with the colors I chose. I'm happy with the way it all turned out and the just sheer volume of it. It's huge and I love it. Um, and originally I had planned for this shawl to be something I would have in my office that I could curl up in um, to be cozy if it was chilly in here. Um, in the summer if the AC was on too much and in the winter I always need something to snuggle up in. Um, but I've decided that 
This shawl is actually going to be going to live with a, a dear friend of mine who has gone through um, quite a few things in the last few years, and I think she would appreciate it. So as much as I enjoy knitting this shawl, and um, I really loved playing with colors, I loved putting the colors together and blending from one to the other, and every once in a while I just get an itch to knit some brioche. So this project totally, totally scratch that itch. But now I think that this shawl needs to be with a friend of mine. So um, this is my What the Fade shawl. I'm going to take some pictures um, to show you the finished project in all of its massive glory. Uh, the, the intent of this shawl was to have some fun knitting, but also to use up some stash yarns and Mo uh, out of the six colors that I used, most of them used about half a skein. Now they're each knit out of uh, fingering weight yarns, various fingering weight yarns, and the totals of those skeins were about 400 yards per 100 gram, or a little over 400 meters per 100 gram skein. Uh, there was one or two colors where I used a bit more than that. Um, all of the project information is on my uh, Ravelry project page. So if you want to see how much yarn I used, you can see there. there were, I think the one, one of these lighter colors I ended up, or two of the lighter, the white speckledies, I used probably three quarters of a skein, but most of the other ones I used about half. And so I still do have some leftovers. They'll get wound up into a magic ball and put into my crochet blanket at some point. Um, and then I'm going to take some beautiful pictures of this What the Fade shawl, pack it up, and send it to my dear friend. So what I wanted to do is see if it would fit into my market bag because it's it's really big. And if we just kind of shove it in there, look at that. And like room for some other things too. I can stick my socks in there. Let's stick a book in there. Oh, just finished this book a couple weeks ago, The Maid. It's quite a delightful read, nothing challenging, but entertaining if you're looking for something light and uh, delightful at the beach. And you can fit approximately one massive shawl, a pair of socks, and a book in your French or your girlfriend market bag, in case you were curious. I have two projects on the needles right now and one in the wings. So let's start with what I've been working on. I finally decided to cast on my inclinations cowl. And of course I'm mid row, so I'm gonna knit while I talk to you. Um, when the inclinations shawl came out, I was really excited about it because I liked the drape a bit. I liked the idea of melding colors, again, playing with colors and uh, working on a different stitch pattern was appealing at the time. And then after the shawl came out, Andrea Mowry announced her cowl. And of course I wanted to knit one of those two, partly because of the um, the fun of playing with color, but also her shifty, shifty, shift cowl is such a great accessory. It's easy to wear, you just plop it on your neck um, and away you go. And it's also, I think, a great knit to gift because of its size and the way you can individualize it with color um, it's just a great thing to knit. So when she came out with her inclinations cowl, I was on board. I picked up some yarn at the Edmonton Fiber Frolic in at the end of May. So let me show you the colors I found. These are two skeins of DK yarn dyed by Comfy Cozy Knits. Um, let me see if I have a ball band here somewhere. I do. Comfy Cozy Knits. Um, and she does have a website and she just says, be cozy, be comfy, be cozy, which sounds delightful. They were also just the colors I was looking for. So I got a beautiful deep burgundy. This is called Sangria, lovely. And then I got this lovely variegated skein. It's called Spooked. So the two of them together are quite fun, I think. And the other week I cast on. I haven't been working on this too terribly much, but let me show you how far I've gotten. Oh, let me show you the right side. 
The inclination's cowl is a half fisherman's rib triangular piece that has some shaping in it to make a nice cowl shape. The shape, the finished shape is pretty much the same as the shift cowl. So you, um, the construction is different because you're using a different stitch pattern, but the end shape is pretty much the same. You alternate the colors every two rows and you come up with these really strong lines of knit stitches and sort of pearl ditches. Um, half fisherman's rib and brioche are similar, but not the same. Let me show you the back side. In fisherman's rib, you don't do a yarn over, but you do end up with on one side, almost twice the number of, not almost definitely twice the number of um, stitch Vs. If you can look in the column, you get two of every color on this side. And on the, the uh, knit ridges, you get one of every color on the other side because of how the stitches worked. Um, and it's shaped, starts as a little triangle. At some point, I'm going to stop increasing on this side and sort of <clears throat> change the shape much as you do in the shift cowl and I'm not going to tell you all of that because it's a paid for pattern um, but I am using a slightly heavier yarn than the pattern calls for. I am using a DK while the original pattern called for a sport weight. Um, it's knit in dyed in the wool which is actually a fairly light sport weight. The original pattern calls for a what size needle? 2.75 millimeter needle. And I am using a 3.25 because of my heavier weight of yarn. I'm probably going to adjust my pattern because of the weight of my yarn. If I were just to knit the pattern as written, it would be quite big. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do is just go by the measurements. And when I get to the measurement um, in the schematic, I'm going to um, start the um, shaping to, to create the shape of the cowl. But I'm really liking how it's working up. It's an easy stitch. Um, and once you have sort of learn the pattern repeat, it's easy just to go on autopilot and not have to refer to the pattern, which is really nice. And I think that it's gonna be a really fun fall accessory especially because my shift cowl, which I like to wear is in blues and greens. So this, um, color palette is sort of another one that I wear quite a bit. Uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing how much yarn I use. I'm sort of wondering if I could maybe get two cowls out of these two balls. We'll see. I will keep you updated. But that's my inclinations cowl just started um, on the needles for now. And the other project that I finished, as soon as I had cast off my Wet the Fade shawl, which is a bigger project, I think we can agree, it's pretty massive, um, I started my Ornata blouse. This is a blouse that I have been waiting for patiently. Um, the pattern is written by uh, Tati Lutzak. She is a knitter, knitting designer, originally from Ukraine, living in the Netherlands. And uh, this blouse really, really appealed to me. It is designed to mimic the uh, embroidered blouses from Ukraine specifically, um, but they're, I think, sort of prevalent in Eastern Europe, but specifically Ukraine is known for these blouses with beautiful embroidered sleeves. I'll pop a picture of the finished, or of the pattern right here uh, to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. But it's a very blousy kind of style and it's got these full, beautiful color work sleeves. Um, and so I pulled some yarn that I had in my stash. It's been sitting there for a, a little while since the last Knit City a couple of years ago, just waiting for the right project. And it turns out that it's perfect for this project. The yarn I'm using is Lillian Pine. Lillian Pine is a dyer out of Calgary, Alberta, and I'm using her rose sock base. It is 80% merino, 10% cashmere, and 10% nylon. Delightful. 
And this pattern was knit out of a sort of a light DK, almost sport weight kind of yarn. And it turns out that this yarn is about the same grist. Grist means um, the number of yards or meters you get per weight of yarn. So um, when I compared 100 grams of this yarn with 100 grams of the suggested yarn, they were about the same, which was great. It's a great starting point. So then I did a swatch, which is a little bit unlike me. <laughs> I'm not the best swatcher, but I wanted this pr uh, project to turn out well and I wanted to get the sizing right. So the project is knit in the round and so what I did was knit a swatch in the round. To do that you just simply knit on your circular needles and when you get to the end of your row instead of flipping it around and purling you scooch all your needles to the end to the other end of your needle, drape your yarn across the back and knit again. When you're knitting in the round every round is a knit and when you're knitting stockinette stitch flat, you knit one side and purl one side. Most people's purls are a slightly different gauge or tension than their knits. And so if you're going to be doing a swatch for knitting in the round, it's important that your swatch be knit as closely as possible to the technique that you're using. So by doing this, by knitting every row and just draping the yarn across the back, you can best approximate what it is like to knit in the round. My gauge was pretty much spot on, which was quite nice. I did end up going up a needle size. This pattern calls for three millimeter needles and I'm using a 3.25 millimeter needle, um, which is perfect. So let me show you how far I've gotten. It's sort of bunched up on my needles. This isn't the best way to show you, um, but this is what I've got so far. That's actually not a bad way to look at it. This pattern starts with a picot hem or edge for the neckline. It's quite a wide neckline uh, because it is quite blousy. And I did like the picot edge as sort of a sort of lacy or feminine sort of touch. Um, the pattern has two suggestions. You can either do a provisional cast on and then undo that provisional cast on to uh, knit the two um, edges of the picot edge together or you can do a long tail cast on to give yourself some more stability at the neck. I chose that because um, I think that if I if you use a provisional cast on, it can be very, very stretchy. And with the weight of this sweater, even though it is, it's knit in like a sport weight yarn, but there's a lot of volume in the sleeves and I didn't want the neckline to stretch out over time to be um, wider than I would have liked. So I used the a long tail cast on, and then at some point after you, when you're doing a pico hem, you uh, knit two rows of stitching together. So let me show you what that looks like on the wrong side. So I just picked up the um, cast on edge and knit it together. This is the front side, knit it together. Oh my goodness. There, that's better. I knit it together with the stitches on the needle and that gave me this sort of hem but it's also quite stable as you can like I'm sort of tugging on it and it doesn't stretch too much um, which I'm happy about because I want this sweater to stay. I don't want it to be like growing as I wear it. Um, so I'm just now working on some short rows which will um, bring the back of the sweater back of the neckline up a little bit um, and drop the front of it a little bit um, as a lot of sweaters have. And then I'm just, then it's just a lot of knitting. The yarn that I'm using again is the Lillian Pine. The main color is called Sand Dollar. And the contrast color that I'm going to be using for the color work on the sleeves is called After Midnight. And it's this really rich navy blue color. There's a lot of variegation in these skeins. And so once I'm done the short rows here on the, on the back of the neck, then it's just a lot of straight knitting until I get to the bottom hem. So once I finish the short row shaping, I'm going to start doing helical knitting. Helical knitting is a way of alternating skeins when you're knitting in the round to try and offset some of that 
pooling that can happen with a variegated or tonal yarn. Um, helical knitting is not difficult to do. There are plenty of videos on how to do it. I'll link to one in, in the show notes below if you're interested. Um, but basically what you do is you um, knit around with one strand of your yarn, stop three stitches before the end of your round, you drop that strand, slip three, and then pick up another strand of yarn and then knit around until you get to your first strand again, stop three stitches before that strand of yarn, slip three stitches, and then knit around. And what that does is stagger your yarns, stagger your strands of yarn for every round. So instead of going all the way around, you go all the way around except three stitches. And that just creates this little bit of a um, sort of movement in the strands of yarn so that you don't get the same um, color blocking that can happen if you just knit um, around and around and around. It also doesn't have an obvious change of color spot. So if you were to just change your yarn at the same spot every round, you would have sort of a visible line on the outside of your knitting, not intentionally, but because every time you picked up the new yarn, it would pull up a little bit and it changes the give of the yarn. When you do helical knitting, you don't get that same sort of um, laddering almost effect. You just get a constant um, rotation of the yarn around. And so there's no obvious change of color and there's also no obvious change of tension. So if you're knitting something in the round, using helical knitting is a great way to not have um, color blocking or noticeable changes when you shift from skein to skein. Because with hand dyed yarn, it's inevitable that there will be um, differences from skein to skein. That's why we love hand dyed yarn so much. So those are the two projects I have on the needles today. And I have one more to be cast on very soon. As you know, I've been taking part in the year of dishcloths. It's hosted by the kitchen sink shop and today is July 1st. So I anticipate getting a dishcloth pattern in my inbox any minute. Um, for this month, which is July and uh, I am celebrating Canada day. I'm going to be using this suds, uh, cotton yarn by Estelle. The colorway does not have a name, at least not on here, but I thought it kind of reminded me of Canada Day and Canada flags and strawberry shortcake, which I'm going to be baking later today. So I'll be casting on a dishcloth and you can look forward to seeing that next time on Jolene Knits A Lot. What are you getting up to? It's July and it's officially summer. My kids are off school and it's time for us to relax a little bit, slow down and enjoy the warmer weather. Um, having said that, I do anticipate a lot of soccer games because my kids' soccer teams have done very well this year and we'll both be going to city finals. Um, and then who knows where we'll be off to from there. So we'll be enjoying some sunny weather, possibly beside a soccer pitch. We also look forward to enjoying my husband's new fire pit, which I will hopefully take pictures of for you for next time. And just settling into uh, our new house. Thanks for joining me. I, um, I as ever enjoy talking to you and sharing my little projects and the things I'm working on. And I love hearing from you and the things you're working on. So um, drop me a line in the comment box below. At the, um, in the comments or section below this video, I always include how to get a hold of me. So if you're interested and you wanna chat, please shoot me an email or follow me on Instagram. Uh, or have a look at my project page on Ravelry. In the next couple weeks, I hope you find time to uh, reach out, send me a message, but also uh, have some fun doing some of the projects that you love to do. I know I plan on knitting a lot. See you soon. Bye.